Hello. Today we're going to talk about polarized light. So we have three goals today. So we'll just introduce polarized light, and we'll talk in particular about linearly polarized light, also known as plane polarized light. We will talk about what happens when unpolarized light passes through a polarizer, and we'll compare that to what happens when linearly polarized light passes through, or maybe it doesn't even pass through a polarizer. And finally, we'll talk very briefly about polarized sun sunglasses. Okay, so we have a picture here showing an electromagnetic wave. It's a plane polarized electromagnetic wave. Or it's a linearly polarized electromagnetic wave. Okay, so it's plane polarized, linearly polarized, same thing. So the electric field vectors all line up along one particular plane and the magnetic field vectors all line up along another plane. And the magnetic field vectors are always perpendicular to the electric field vectors. So most light sources, such as a regular uh, incandescent light bulb or the sun, emit unpolarized light. But there are several ways that w in which light can be polarized. And you can actually polarize light by reflection. You can polarize light by what's called selective absorption, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And we'll also talk a little bit about how you can polarize light by scattering, and this is what happens with light in the atmosphere, for instance. Okay, so let's have a, just a quick look at this, um, this wave in action. So you can see the wave propagating upwards here, and we're not sure which is which. The red could be the electric field vectors, the magnetic field vectors. They're definitely one or the other. In fact, there's a way to tell. It's a right-hand rule to tell. We'll go over that in class. But you can see here, as we rotate it around, that the vectors really are perpendicular to each other. Okay. So you get this 90-degree angle between the electric field vectors and the magnetic field vectors. Electric field vectors are all in one plane. Magnetic field vectors are all in another plane. And then the wave itself propagates in a direction perpendicular to both the plane in which the electric field vectors are in and the plane in which the magnetic field vectors are in. Okay, so we'll talk about what a polarizer does. This is what the company Polaroid made all their money off, actually, at uh, least in the early days. And this is polarization by selective absorption. And there's a certain class of materials called dichroic materials. And they're actually made up of long chain molecules. And these molecules all line up. So you get these long chain molecules. And then an electromagnetic wave, such as a beam of light, comes along and hits these molecules, interacts with the molecules. And electrons in the molecules can be driven along the length, back and forth, along the length of the molecule by the electric field. Uh, vectors, and that will absorb that energy. Whereas the electric field vectors perpendicular to that, you don't lose the energy because you can't drive electrons in that direction. So there's a selective absorption of light with electric field vectors pointing in a particular direction, and then the other ones actually go through. And so if the material is thick enough, you will absorb all light with electric field vectors in one direction, and so your light comes out linearly polarized electric field vectors all going the other way, what we call parallel to the transmission axis of the polarizer. And the lenses of polarizing sunglasses are in fact made of dichroic material. Okay. And finally, one last thing to keep in mind is if you take unpolarized light, completely unpolarized light, and shine it through a polarizer, then exactly half of the intensity of the light goes through. So half is absorbed and half goes through. So the intensity afterwards is half as much as it was coming in. The light isn't nearly as bright. It's half as bright is what it comes down to. Okay, so sometimes you have linearly polarized light encountering a polarizer. In this case, the intensity of the transmitted light is given by what's called Malice's Law. Analysis law, I'm going to write it like this. The I1, that's the intensity of the light emerging from the polarizer, is I0, the initial intensity, 
times cos squared delta theta. Often you'll see this equation as cos squared theta, but I like to write it as cos squared delta theta because it reminds you that the angle is actually the difference between two things. Okay, it's the angle between the polarization direction of the light and the transmission axis of the polarizer. Okay, so you've got to look at what angle the light's at, what angle the polarizer is at, the transmission axis, take the difference between them, that's the angle that goes into Malice's law. Okay, so you can get anywhere, in fact, between 0% of the light through and 100% of the light through, according to Malice's law. Okay, depending on what angle you have between the polarization direction of the light and the transmission axis. Okay, if they're aligned with each other, you get cos squared of zero. Well, cos of zero is one. Square that, you get one. You get 100% of the light going through. On the other hand, if you have a 90 degree angle between the polarization direction and the transmission axis, no light gets through. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so let's go on and we'll talk a little bit more about this. Okay, so in this um, picture here, and we'll animate it in a, in a minute, we have polarized light in yellow encountering a polarizer, and you can kind of see the polarization axis of that polarizer. And then you get some light in kind of orangey red emerging from that polarizer. So Again, when light passes through the polarizer, it comes out still linearly polarized, but now the polarization direction matches the direction of the polarizer's transmission axis. Okay, so in this case, when you start with a light not in that direction, you lose some of the light, whatever was in some sense polarized perpendicular to the transmission axis, and you pass all the light with components along the, the uh, transmission axis. Okay. So the light won't be as intense, still be polarized, but it'll be polarized in a different direction. Okay, so we'll see this in action, and we'll kind of rotate this around and see it from a few different angles. Okay, so you can see, actually, you're really getting one component of the original light passing through. The light's not as bright. Okay, you see those things are in different directions, and the light that emerges is parallel to the transmission axis of the polarizer. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is add a second polarizer, and it turns out the second polarizer has its transmission axis at 90 degrees to the first. So this is what is called crossed polarizers. So in that case, no light at all will get through the second one, because the job of the first polarizer is to polarize the light so it matches the transmission axis of the first one. Then the second polarizer, its angle is at 90 degrees to the first one, so that means it's at 90 degrees to the light that's hitting it now. And when you do Malice's law, you get cosine of 90, which is 0, squared, that's still 0. Okay, so this is what we call crossed polarizer. So a good way to block the light, block 100% of the light, is to use two polarizers back to back with their transmission axes at right angles to each other, 90 degrees to each other. Okay, so we're going to give you questions that look like this. Okay, so we're going to have certain uh, intensity of uh, unpolarized light encounters two polarizers. Okay, so the light is unpolarized, that's on the left, it encounters this polarizer, that's the kind of um, egg-shaped object here. It's, it's really round, but we're looking at it from an angle. And the polarization, the transmission axis of our polarizer is at 50 degrees to the vertical. Okay, so what happens in that case is is you get 50% uh, of the light going through the first polarizer because you started with unpolarized light. Okay, so the angle of the transmission axis doesn't affect how much the intensity is reduced by. But what it does affect is what direction is the beam now? Because the beam comes out of the first polarizer polarized. Whether you start with unpolarized light or polarized light, you come out of that first polarizer, your light is polarized because it matches the transmission axis of the beam. Okay, so when you get to the to answering the question, well, how much light now comes out of the second polarizer? Well, you'd have to apply Malice's law there, okay? Because you've got polarized light at a particular angle encountering a, uh, a second polarizer with its transmission axis at some angle. Apply Mal Malice's law to that, and you'll see how much intensity gets through. 
Okay, then we could change things up and we could say, well, what if the incident beam is linearly polarized? So we haven't shown this on the picture, but we could change that incident beam to be linearly polarized in a particular direction. And then we'd have to tell you what direction it was polarized in, because then you, you'd have to know that to correctly apply Malice's Law. So you apply Malice's Law to tell you how much, what the intensity is of the light emerging from that first polarizer. Again, it comes out polarized, aligned with the transmission axis of the first polarizer, and then you apply Malice's Law yet again to figure out how much um, light, what intensity light emerges from that second polarizer. And of course, the light emerging from the second polarizer always matches the direction of the transmission axis of that second polarizer. So the light is always polarized along the direction of the last polarizer it went through. Okay, so those are kind of, uh, kind of an introduction to these questions, and we'll do some more in class when we get there. Okay, so finally today we'll talk a little bit about polarization by scattering, and this kind of affects uh, polarizing sunglasses, why we might wear them. And this is the kind of polarization you might see occurring in the atmosphere, okay? And what happens here is that there's light streaming into the atmosphere from the sun, and that light, some of it, will be absorbed by atoms or molecules, and then emitted again, and again, the light gets emitted again, but usually in a different direction from the way it was going. So this is what we call scattering, the change in direction that the light experiences. Now, depending on which way the light is scattered, you can get polarized light in particular directions, okay? So if the light does keep going in the same direction, then it's unpolarized. It was unpolarized to start with, it's still unpolarized. If the atom or molecule sends the light in a direction perpendicular to the way it was traveling, then it actually is linearly polarized. And if it's in a direction somewhere between those, then it's partly polarized, but not completely, and not completely unpolarized. Okay, so the interesting thing is the 90 degree direction. So here's something you can do. So on a nice clear day where there's a nice blue sky, you put on a pair of polarizing sunglasses and you look at where the sun is and then you look about 90 degrees to that direction. Okay, so wearing your polarizing sunglasses, you look at that part of the sky. And light coming to you from that part of the sky should be linearly polarized. Okay, so if you just tilt your head back and forth from side to side, you should see the sky darken and lighten. And that's because the if, you know, if you take your sunglasses off, you won't see the effect. It's only you're only seeing this if you um, wear your polarizing sunglasses. And if the sunglasses are not polarizing, you can't see this either. Okay, so the sunglasses cut off more light at particular angles than they do at other angles. So that's why you see the skies being darker in at some angles at which you tilt your head and lighter at others. Okay, and also we'll talk a little bit about polarization by reflection. And polarizing sunglasses are actually designed to block light that reflects off horizontal surfaces, such as light shining off the surface of a lake, something like that. Because you get a lot of glare that happens when light reflects like that. So what happens is that when you reflect light, let's say it's unpolarized, reflect it off a surface. So uh, the light gets at least partly polarized, and depending on what the angle is, it sometimes can be completely linearly polarized. Okay, So if you uh, reflect off a horizontal surface, the light will be polarized in a horizontal plane. So polarized sunglasses block horizontally polarized light. That means the transmission axis of your lenses has to be vertical. Okay, So they let the vertical stuff through, and they block all the horizontally polarized light. Okay, so you cut off a lot of that glare, and then uh, if you're a fisherman or something, you're out on the lake in your canoe or whatever, okay, you don't get that nasty glare off the um, off the lake, and you can actually makes it easier to see down into the lake and see where the fish are and things like that. Okay, so that is all for today for our introduction to polarized light, particularly linearly polarized light.